government receives pledge from United Nations to support its transformation agenda. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. The house was shaking, shaking. Then suddenly, so we hear me, crack, 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 and the roof had gone. Man, I was so scared, I nearly wet myself. Only those who have lived it can truly understand the devastating fury of a hurricane's wind. The house across the road just get up and roll over. Hurricane force wind. It's a hazard. Hazards. Take control. Reduce your loss. You can hurricane proof your home. For example, Make your roof more wind resistant by using screws instead of nails in its construction. Find out more about hurricane force winds and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from the National Disaster Management Agency and Sidera. With the details to the news for Wednesday, August 24th, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Resident coordinator of the United Nations to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Didier Trebek, has pledged to support Grenada's transformation agenda through its implementation plans 2022 to 2023, geared toward promoting the acceleration of the country's sustainable development goals. Mr. Trebek says with over 14 UN agencies on island, support will continue in vulnerable areas, including COVID-19 recovery, climate change, economic crisis, high cost of food and financial restraints from international agencies and institutions. He was speaking during a consultation with cabinet ministers and government officials on Tuesday as part of a series of meetings to discuss ongoing programs to chart the way forward for the formulation of new and upcoming projects. As the, as the United Nations, of course, we stand ready uh, to support and amplify the transformative agenda that you have set out uh, with uh, your governments to promote inclusivity, uh, people empowerment, particularly the youth, uh, but also foster food security, uh, holistic approach to healthcare as well, um, combating climate change, uh, fostering blue economy, among many other areas, but I'm sure we'll be uh, hearing uh, a lot from you and, and your cabinet today. Um, as resident coordinator and representative of the Secretary General, I want to put on record that Grenada has been a strong supporter of multilateralisms and continues to play its part in promoting the ideals of the United Nations. Um, I also congratulate Grenada for the recent appointment of a Grenadian as the head of the UN uh, FCCC. I think this is a great recognition to the CIS agenda. And I know from our initial discussion, Prime Minister, that, uh, uh, that you and your government are uh, equally and uh, uh, strongly committed to multilateralism and the UN and the uh, Sustainable Development Goals agenda. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell says his administration wants to leverage all efforts and opportunities to design, develop and harmonize projects and programs that will realize economic prosperity. He says if Grenada is to achieve its Sustainable Development Goals, government and supporting partners must address digital transformation, climate sustainability sustainable funding and technical cooperation to boost its project implementation rate. Digital transformation, both of government services and in a sense larger digital transformation throughout Grenada and by extension the OECS, uh, particularly with a lot of the OECS regional institutions, uh, is something that is common to both of us and it's something that I think certainly we can work together to, to achieve. We recognize that to a large extent, our continued existence, and if I dare say survival, uh, depends on our ability to not just be climate resilient in almost all aspects of our life, but to be able to adapt. Um, and so climate funding, and I, I, I say funding because to a large extent, I think almost every aspect of what we do in Grenada is impacted um, by the climate. But I also accept that it's not just shouting or advocating for more funding. Uh, it's also developing our capacity to, should we get the funding, actually spend the funding. So um, I'm aware uh, that many of us, including Grenada, face an implementation deficit when it comes to actually uh, implementing um, funds that may be available. In some instances, actually sourcing and getting the funds. 
Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Export Development, Roxy McLeese Hutchinson, commended the UN team for its efforts to collaborate toward fulfilling government's transformation agenda. This is a timely and consequential platform that we have convened today. We must seize this moment to transform how we collaborate on our shared vision and on our implementation pathways, recognizing that together, through solidarity and partnerships, we can tackle common risk that threatened us, we can build resilience, and we can, in doing so, transform the lives of our people, our region, and our world. Grenada applauds your commitment towards broad-based partnerships with the Caribbean that encapsulates businesses, civil society, and ordinary citizens working together for the greater good. Minister for Mobilization, Implementation and Transformation, Honorable Andy Williams, conducted his first official site visit to the St. John's River Flood Mitigation Project on Wednesday. Minister Williams was accompanied by consultant Beston Consulting, contractors Sunrise Construction and Creative Designs, and permanent secretary in the Ministry of MIT, Ms. Perron Johnson. He said the purpose was primarily to get an update from the consulting team and contractors, but more importantly, to chart the way forward. The project has been broken up into different stages, right? We have, you know, from or different packages, so to speak, from package one to seven. And we have observed so far what has been taking place. And um, both Sunrise Construction and Creative Design were responsible for doing the actual construction of the river road, um, the walls and so, that will keep out the water. And we have Beston as a consultant. And everything seems to be going well. They, they explained everything, what, what they were doing to us. And so far we are satisfied. We have identified the bottlenecks that have to be cleared up. We have, we have identified the status of the project. And right now, right now we are seeing how we can move forward in terms of um, implementing the project in a timely manner. The flood mitigation project consists of seven packages. Packages one and two were awarded to Creative Designs. Infrastructural work on packages three and four were completed by Sunrise Construction Company. Minister Williams says his ministry will ensure that the tendering process for the other packages can be done. We have certain parts that need to be tendered and in the aim to, to, to do it quickly, my ministry will see what we can do to, to fast track the process so that this project does, doesn't take too much time. The works involved, one is the main road, one there's a, a bridge by steel area. We are going to remove the bridge by steel and put it a little higher by where the hump is. Also we are going to move the original bridge, you know the humpback bridge by to go to the stadium. We are going to move that one and bring it a little lower down again. So all these are things that we have to tender and we know that we have local companies that can do the job and we will be rooting for them to, to get a job to be done. And we have full confidence in them to do it promptly and in an effective manner. GIS spoke with Program Manager of Creative Designs, Darren Woodward. He said that packages one and two of the project are on schedule for completion. Currently we are on program, uh, due to complete uh, presently at the end of September. Uh, with both packages one and two. Uh, we are, the, the work is going very well and we are within budget. For package one, uh, we are currently in the process of closing up on what would be the stadium side of the river. Uh, on the south side, adjacent to where we are and where I am right now, uh, we're currently just uh, awaiting some assistance before we can commence with the remainder of this wall. Uh, in package two, we're in the process of completing the Gabion baskets, which form the, again, the stadium of the north side of the river. And we have one small section, roughly 32 metres of uh, construction of uh, retaining wall on the south side of the river, which sits behind Purcell's building. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. COVID-19 spreads from person to person through the droplets that are produced when someone coughs or sneezes, which makes it easy to spread between people in close contact. 
Now let's get prepared to stay healthy. To reduce your chance of catching or spreading COVID-19, practice these simple everyday preventative measures. Droplets can also land on surfaces, so ensure that you wash your hands frequently for a minimum of 20 seconds or sing the happy birthday song twice. Avoid touching your face, especially your eyes, nose, and mouth. If soap and water are not readily available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with an alcohol content between 60 and 90%. 70% is ideal. When you cough or sneeze, cover your nose and mouth with a flexed elbow or a tissue. Dispose of the tissue immediately and then wash your hands. If you notice someone has a fever and cough or other symptoms of respiratory illness, avoid close contact when possible. Let's all do our part to ensure that each and every Grenadian remains healthy. Our health is our collective responsibility. Continuing the news, the Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority has secured an agreement for another property to bale scrap metal on island. Earlier this year, the authority, along with partners, embarked on the derelict vehicle cleanup campaign, where it has the responsibility of laying the foundation for the proper processing of scrap metal to customers. The authority's integrated resource manager, Alan Gilbert, spoke on the identification of another site for baling, which he says will mitigate some of the issues faced. The Solid Waste Authority scrap metal facility currently operates at Queen's Park. Currently, uh, we have one site under operations and we have just secured an next site. So the site we currently operate from is uh, the old central garage at the Greenland Bureau of Standards, at the rear of the Greenland Bureau of Standards. So we have been operating there. We've had some of our own challenges. I believe in the near future, we could see um, the operations ramped up. Um, we could, with the new location that we, we're getting, and hopefully with an agreement that we're waiting on uh, that should be ratified and signed uh, by the administra administration. Uh, that would allow us to uh, bring the private partner in who would assist with the setup of collection depots and processing. Uh, we should see an in, uh, increase in the collection and bail. He says the authority has introduced operational structures to improve the facility at Queen's Park while the scrap metal is still in their hands. The, the market for scrap metals is very volatile. Uh, so when the market is up, this, the recyclers, they will try to ship as quickly as possible to capitalize. But when it's down, they will try to uh, stockpile the bills. And so that is where the problem arises by the having stockpiles. Some in bills, when it's in a bill form, it's not that bad. But when it's just um, uh, pieces and bits and bit, pieces of scrap, it is kind of unsightly and then it poses some of the environmental health challenges. So we've had, um, uh, we've started our operations and we've had some little issues, but we've uh, managed to, to bring some regulation to the way we carry the operations out at the, at the Queen's Park. And so we're hoping that it's going to be done in a very um, sanitary manner. And, um, and in a very from a very structured approach point of view. Manager of the Transmission and Distribution Department at the National Water and Sewage Authority, Nawasa, Ernest Bruno, says the company is working to establish a filter with sedimentation tanks to improve its water quality in the not too distant future. This follows a water crisis that occurred on Friday at the Richmond Hill storage tanks after heavy rainfall. Nawasa's communications officer, Jamila Lewis, has more in this report. The National Water and Sewage Authority in Awasa remains committed to resolving the water challenges facing consumers served by the Richmond Hill storage tank over the past few days. Last Friday, a mechanical issue coupled with the inclement weather affected the distribution system, resulting in an extremely dirty water crisis. Manager of Nawasa's Transmission and Distribution Department, Mr. Ernest Bruno, says Nawasa has been resolute in its efforts to address the shortfall, 
and communities will start to receive a supply during the evening. First, I must express my apology on behalf of Nawasa to the residents served by the Richmond Hill Tank. And I'm referring to areas such as Marian, Monjalu, Defu, White Gun, and all the other areas served by the Richmond Hill Tank. It's unfortunate that you are going through what you are going through now, but I must let you know that we are doing everything possible. We are working feverishly to restore your water by some time today. On Friday, we had multiple breaks on the five-inch line that comes from the Les Avocat tank via the sedimentation, which goes onto the pressure filter. We had multiple breaks on it. A great deal of rain fell. As a result, the water become heavily turbid. I must say turbid is a scientific word maybe for dirty water. Our water was very dirty. If the turbidity level required is between zero to five, that water that we were receiving now was approximately 400 and beyond. Un unfortunately, our system does not allow us to treat that water within a short period of time. Noasa's water tankers commence work at 6 a.m. as a contingency plan. However, Mr. Bruno says Noasa is working to ensure that such a challenge is addressed in the not to distant future. Presently, the hydraulic analysis is being done. We have already purchased the land, so as to, as to set up a, a filter with a sedimentation tank and slow sand filters now. So in cases as that, we will not be able to be going back down the same road, but we will have water and we better able to treat to treat such water right i must say that in the short term we are seeing that this should be operational within the next six to nine months we should be able to give you a better quality of water one such and respond much quicker once such situation arises Noasa thanks affected consumers for the understanding and patience during the restoration period. For the National Water and Sewage Authority, Noasa, I am Jamila Lewis. That story just ended the national report for Wednesday, August 24th, recapping the top story. Government receives pledge from United Nations to support its transformation agenda. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rakesha St. Louis.